G'day, I'm Warwick Shiller and I want to introduce you to our new foal chance. Hey mister, how are you going? So he's about uh, five weeks old now I think. He's out of Bella here and he's actually a three-quarter brother to the horse I showed at the Water Equestrian Games last year. So he's by the same sire and his mother here, Bella, she is a half-sister to uh, Petey's mother. So. Petey's mother's by a horse named Custom Chrome, and this mare's by a horse named Custom Chrome. Hey, mister, how are you going? And so I have been posting on social media how I haven't actually been touching Chance right here. Um, he's, we've allowed him to come and interact with us. Like, if he wants to come sniff us, that's fine. But I actually, none of us have actually laid a hand on Chance. And there's a, there's a reason I'm doing that. You know, in the past, I've handled these foals quite young and got them used to a lot of different things and it and it works fine if you just want a really just quiet sort of a horse but I do think they lose just a little bit of that that spark in there and uh, you know it's funny when you you start posting things on social media I've been telling people on social media that I'm not actually haven't actually touched him yet and I'm not planning to touch him for a little while and uh, it's amazing the the opinions you get about you know people's opinions on that and everybody's entitled their own opinion this is where I'm at right now but I had a um, one of the reasons I don't want to touch him I want to keep that natural curiosity in there and I've got a I've got a uh, short video to show you here I was in Australia earlier this year and a friend of mine has a foal there and she said she can't touch him and I'm going to show you this video in a second and it'll show you how I went about touching this foal for the first time and she said she you know she's tried to touch him and she can't touch him and this stuff's all based on something I learned from a horseman named Luke Thomas in Australia a couple of years ago. And Luke's an amazing horseman. And he has a job once a year handling about 150 unweaned thoroughbred folds. And I went out there for about 10, 12 days and, and went through a set of those with Luke and really learned some really cool stuff. And it really kind of changed the way I think about interacting with folds. So have a look at this video with this. This is me first walking into the, into this, uh, the pen he was living in with this this uh, unhandled fold that the owner says she can't touch. Hello, sweetheart. So right then, he turned and looked at me like that. And when he does, I'm just going to go away. I really want to have him... Hey, sweet, I'm going to catch you. I'd really want to have him thinking. What I don't want to do is have him going away from me. So I don't want to try to touch him or anything like that that would cause him to, to leave. And right here he's sniffing me. What I wouldn't do is turn around and try to touch him. I'm going to go over here. I kind of want him keeping... I kind of... I kind of want to keep him wanting more. So whenever he comes towards me, I'm just going to wander around the other side of it. You're okay, sweetheart. It'd be easier if you weren't wandering around like that. So, if I'd have come in here and got a hold of her and he wasn't interested in me, I would have kind of snapped my fingers, done something like that to kind of get his attention. And when I got his attention, I would then hide around behind her. Okay? I don't have that problem. Like, say it was like that. I might go like this and right there he looks at me, I hide over here. So that's why I'm really adamant about like unhandled folds. Every time you come in here you are handling them whether you're touching them or not. So right there I might do a little something right here and right as he hasn't looked at me yet, right when he looks at me I'm going to go here because after a while what you end up with if when you get further along in the process, if they leave, like if they go wandering off, you can do that and whoomp, you can, you can bring them, suck them right back to you. So you almost, it's not like you're teaching them a cue, but if they wander off and you start snapping your fingers or whatever little thing it is you're doing, when they finally come around, you kind of take it away. You basically, it's like negative reinforcement. After a while, you can teach them that if they look at you, that thing goes away.
Then the next step what you can do is put your hand on her and bring it around here and he will boom. You know how you said you can't touch him? That right there, if you put your hand on her, it's not coming at him, it's part of mum, but she's got a growth on her, what's that? And they'll come over and that's the, that's the first, that's the first touch, is them touching you like that. And you want to try to take your hand away before they leave, so you've really just got to have, you've just got to realise you're not trying to pat the foal, because you'll end up chasing them away. you really got to keep them thinking towards you. And then you just work on it <coughs> from there. Um, and, it's a, and, and it's a process, so I'm not going to do a lot with him today, but... One. So you can see right there, that foal was really good because he was very aware of me and he hadn't kind of got into that, you yeah, know, I'm not concerned about your stage. And it was very, very easy to use his natural instincts to get that first touch of my hand. So hopefully that'll give you something to think about when it comes to uh, dealing with foals. And I'll keep you updated on how we go with, with young Chance here when I, when I do start handling him.